Praise the Lord, Saints. I'm Pastor Chris Waters, the proud pastor of the historic Thankful Baptist Church in beautiful downtown Augusta, Georgia. Thank you for joining me for this virtual worship service today. Hope you've been blessed thus far that God has been protecting you and your family, that you have been in comfort and in peace during these times of wars and rumors of wars all around us. I hope that God has been keeping you from this pandemic plagues and all of the maladies that have been plaguing our communities. Hopefully you and your family have been safe. But that is the word of God has given me for this Sunday is a word about his divine protection for us. We know that Easter is a few Sundays away from now. In fact, the third Sunday in April, I just want to take this time to invite you now. Make your plans to be in person for our Sunday worship service for Easter Sunday. We begin at 1050 a.m. Have a special musical program planned for you and certainly a word from on high. So please be in the house on Easter. Easter Sunday. Amen. We'll be practicing CDC protocols for uh, houses of worship to be safe. Masks will be required along with temperatures taken at the door. We will be socially distancing ourselves, but overall, we're going to give God some praise for all he has done for us. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I don't want to delay today. I've got a word and I want to preach that to you for your hearing. It'll be coming from Psalms 91. A simple sermon topic, God will take care of you. Oh, hallelujah. And bless his holy name. God will take care of you. Amen. Let's get into the word today. Matthew Henry gives a wonderful description of this passage from Psalms 91. It suggests that the message of this particular psalm is all about those that live a life in close communion with God are constantly safe under his protection and may then live in security and peace of mind at all times. This is comforting to know as we live in a world that's so full of dangers. I read in the Augusta Chronicle just this past week that we are being plagued with gangs locally and nationally. Our young people are being targeted from middle school to high school, trying to persuade them to join these very violent and criminal street gangs. Many times the children are lacking a sense of belonging and family that traditionally they would be circled with from their own biological family as well as their church family. As many families are beginning to pull away from churches, we are losing the circle of protection. But I want to remind you today that God stands waiting with his arms outstretched, ready to receive his children at all times and all places. Psalms 91 tells us that the person who chooses God as his or her shelter will be protected by God from all evil. For truly, we are always under attack by the enemy. We live in a world with disease and destruction and wars and dangers. The arrows of accusation and attack are constantly aimed at the church and God's children. We have both human and spiritual enemies. Yes, you have enemies who are flesh and blood, and you have enemies that are in high places 
is in the spirit realm. Some are natural and many are supernatural forces trying to work against us. But the good news is that God has made a promise that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, God will take care of you. This is not just a promise that your life will be absent of all danger. No, there are going to be dangers as the word of God declares that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. The weapons will be formed. The Bible acknowledges that, but they won't prosper. Oh, hallelujah. They won't be able to succeed. They will not be able to cause you harm. Why? Because God takes care of his children. Yes, the Lord ensures that as you come through dangerous situations and dangerous locations, his protective hand remains on each one of us. God will make sure that no hurt, harm, or danger will come nigh unto you. Now, Psalms 91 gives us confidence. It gives us this assurance that God takes care of us. And not only us, but the promise has been made for the past 3,000 years. Many believers have taken comfort in God's word. Many, however, of our modern age are missing out on this inner peace that God is offering, this sense of assurance of knowing that you are in God's hand, that God has you and you have God. But so many have become impregnated with the skepticism of this age and have become cynical regarding the biblical promises of God that God will give the inner peace to all of his children that trust in him. Too many have been persuaded towards a philosophy of cynicism and skepticism regarding all things religious. They have been miseducated into believing that God's promises are nothing more than fables or nothing more than superstition for the uneducated and the simple-minded and the less sophisticated. Their response to hearing the bold promises of Psalms 94 is to invoke some unfortunate incident that occurred to someone they know or point to science or modern medicine or the work of historians as a reason to reject the Bible as nothing more than fables and old wise tales. But those who are true believers, those who know the Lord for themselves, they know that God is real and his promises, they are true. You need not take anyone else's word for it. You can testify for yourself how you tried the Lord and God, you found him to be faithful. Yes, you found him to be your shield in battle. You found him to be your anchor in a storm. You found him to be your doctor in a sick room. You found him to be your lawyer in a courtroom. You found him to be a friend when you were lonely. You found him to be a savior when you needed deliverance. You know for yourself that God is real and his promises are true. He is your all and your all. You dare not deny the efficacy of the power of God or the veracity of his promises through his word, especially in, in the present pandemic that we face today and many of the world's problems that are bigger than we are. We have to trust in the Lord, for this is not the time to begin to doubt, begin to become skeptical, or to question 
God has promised. As Marvin Sapp once sang, this is not the time to question your faith. This is not your place of destiny. It's not the time or the place to throw in the towel. You got to hold on. You got to be strong. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. It's a part of life that everyone goes through. Sometimes there's joy and and sometimes there's pain. That's a part of God's plan. It's his own plan. So this is not the time. Oh, hallelujah. This is not the place. <laughs> Just believe. Keep the faith. You've got to learn. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting happy for myself. You've got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Mm. This is a challenge. This is our biggest challenge because waiting on the Lord requires faith. Waiting on God requires you to trust in that which you may not be able to see. Too many are unsure about who and what they trust in. Too many are unsure of who or what gives them the confidence to keep pressing on. Too many are uncertain. Who or what gives them peace? Who or what makes them to feel safe? Too many have not searched their hearts. And because they have not searched their hearts, they cannot say without a shadow of a doubt whether or not that they trust in the Lord with their whole hearts. For when people do not trust in God to protect them, they will seek and to find safety and peace and things and people other than in God. But it is our hope and it is our prayer that as you develop as Christians, you will begin to have a spirit like King David, who is the writer of this particular text and said in Psalms chapter four and verse eight, I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone. Listen to these words. You alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. David did not put his trust in his shield or his sword or his personal strength. David does not put his trust in his kingship or in his military or his political advisors. David does does not trust in his wealth, his position, or his influence. No, he does not trust in his courage or fierceness as a fighter. Although he has history where he has slain giants and slain lions and slain bears, uh, even though he did these things, even as a shepherd boy and has won many military battles as a soldier and commander of soldier, David understood understood that his true source of power did not come from himself. His true source of power comes from the Lord. And many believers down through the years have also discovered this truth, that God is faithful to protect his people who trust in him. In fact, one of my favorite theologians, Dr. Charles Spurgeon in 1854, was pastoring a small church in the midst of a major a cholera outbreak in London, England. He relates the personal story during this time when one of his dear friends had fallen ill and they were one by one people within his congregation and community were becoming sick and many were dying. He began to feel this sickness within himself and as he began to try to minister to the needs of those in the congregation and community, he could not help but to weep as so many were beginning to die from this awful disease at that time. He testifies, I felt my burden was heavier than I could bear. I was returning mournfully from a funeral when, as God would have it, my curiosity led me to read a paper which was in a shoemaker's window in the Great Dover Road. It bore in bold handwriting these words, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy 
my habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. In effect, on my heart was immediate. He was encouraged by the word of God that was printed and displayed in that shoemaker's window. His faith had caught on fire and something on the inside began to embolden his trust in the Lord. He said, I felt secure. I felt refreshed. He said, I was girt with immortality. I went on with my visitation of the dying in a calm and peaceful spirit. He said, I no longer felt evil and I trusted that the Lord would keep me safe from all harm. He said, the providence which moved the tradesmen to put place this verse in his window, I gratefully acknowledge and in remembrance of his marvelous power, he said, I adore the Lord my God. 20 years later in 1874, Spurgeon published a commentary on Psalms 94 and he gave it the title, The Privileges of the Godly. In it, he said that as the best preservative in times of cholera, in truth, Psalms 91 is heavenly medicine against plague and pest. Now, having faith in God does not usurp the need for the wisdom of modern medicine to cure many of the elements of today. Too many have fallen victim to this absolutionist uh, mentality. However, trusting God and utilizing modern medicine is not an either or proposition. Just in today's time with the plague of the COVID-19, you can be a Christian and take the vaccine. Oh, hallelujah. In fact, you ought to take the full vaccine and the booster and, 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 and whatever else is available to you to protect yourself against hurt, harm, and danger. Why? Because it was God who gave the scientists the wisdom. It's God who gave the doctors the knowledge to understand the human body. And these things are derived from the natural environment that God has created. For every disease, there is a cure. If we just find the knowledge and trust in God to open our eyes, that we may be able to discover and be able to disseminate it in a way and in a dose that is beneficial to humanity. And so we do not go on these 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 dogmatic uh, tandem tantrums. Well, it's either or for us. Either it's medicine or it's faith. No, 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 no. It's not either or. It's both and. I I I, I need some medication and I need some prayer. Come on, somebody. If I were to break my arm, the doctor would set the arm in place but God would do the healing. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, modern medicine may give you a pill, but for that pill to work on the inside, you need something that is divine to begin to happen so that it may cure the ailments that we face. We know that God, all wisdom comes from God and God is the provider of all things that are good. And for believers, he gives divine protection. And I know the secular humanists believe humans are the final authority and have the solution for all the problems we face. They do not believe in an omnipotent God who helps people, who intervenes and protects and hears us when we call and answers our prayers. I would be naive to think that the church is not constantly in danger of being influenced by this dominant philosophy of our times. But my personal experience of trusting God always trumps the faulty wisdom of this age. For as the songwriter said, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. The Psalms, uh, 90, the, excuse me, the theme of Psalms 94 is simple 
people, uh, the one who makes the Lord his refuge. We will find protection from God. Uh, this is a problem. This is a promise to those who trust in God. It is a promise to the one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. A shelter only protects you, watch this, if you get under it. So many um, people get caught in a in a storm, and uh, statistics show that the majority of people who end up struck by lightning are young men. And they said the reason for this is because so many young men feel invincible. Their youth, their strength, their vitality convinces them that that even if there's lightning striking, it won't hurt them. And because of it, they get struck at a higher rate than any other group of people. But woe unto you when God has provided a shelter and you keep standing out in the rain. No, the wise man gets under the shelter of the Almighty. But verse 9 says, because you made the Lord your dwelling place, watch what happens. No evil shall befall you. The promises of Psalm 91 all hinge on that condition, is that you get under the shelter of the Almighty. For when we are living under his wings, we can sing and shout for joy. Verses 5 and 6 says, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. God protects both day and night. He protects us from the arrows that fly at us during the day, and he protects us from the deadly disease and from destruction that come by night. Verse 7 says, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. The odds may tell you that nine out of 10 people in your situation will have such and such an outcome. But Psalms 91 says it doesn't even matter. Even if the odds are 10,000 to one, God will still protect you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Like the hymn writer said, be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you oh, through every day, over all the way. He will take care of you through days of toil when heart do fail. God will take care of you when dangers fierce your path assail. God will take care of you no matter what may be the test. God will take care of you. Lean, weary one, upon his breast. God will take care of you. And so I challenge you, as we make our way to Easter, put your trust in the Lord. Start each day with a declaration. I will trust in the Lord. As you begin to eat each meal and you say that blessing over the food, I want you to conclude with, and I will trust the Lord. As you kneel down by your bed or lay on your back to say your prayers or prostrate before the Lord before you take your night's rest, as you pray, I want you to finish that prayer, and I will trust in the Lord, for he will take care of you. And we will challenge you that as you put your trust in the Lord, to get in his word, rehearse it in your own hearing. For the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as you read his word and you trust him and you build up your faith, I can tell, I can guarantee you God will fulfill his promise. He will take care of you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you outstretch your wings as a mother hen to cover us, your children. God, you protect us from dangers seen and unseen. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your loving kindness towards us, that even when we go from your presence, God, you stand ready to receive us right back. We pray you give us the courage to trust in you despite the circumstances. 
Keep us safe, Lord, during this pandemic. God, we pray for the world to have peace during this invasion of Ukraine. God, that no wars will spread and those lives that are in danger will be covered, as Psalms 91 tells us, under your wings. God, we pray for our communities that you keep us safe and let peace reign. And in the end, God, let us trust you, knowing you will take care of us. Amen. I'm Pastor Chris Waters, proud pastor of the historic Thankful Baptist Church. I hope you were blessed by this message today. Join me next week. We'll be in person at 302 Walker Street, downtown Augusta, Georgia, at Thankful Baptist Church Sanctuary, 1050 AM. I'd love to see you in the house. God bless.